Well, good day, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to my humble home in Livingston, Montana. Good grief. It's been so long since I've done a YouTube video, I forgot how. Just kidding. I wish I would forget how sometimes. <laughs> oh, I went to turn this stupid encoder on mine on, and I got all kinds of bitch prompts. I was out of date, and my image may be unstable, and all kinds of... You know, programming lies, you know, like that, and I hate that. I hate when software is bugging you. When you've been running along so good, and then all of a sudden you're all screwed up because of some update. Well, uh, anyway, okay, here, I do have some subject matter this morning, but this whole doggone vi video is just an impromptu, non-scripted, non-practiced, non uh, anything, no rehearsal here or nothing, like a lot of my videos are. So plan on me not making any sense. And you know, my dentures falling out of my head and every other thing. Just kidding once again. Okay. This, well, before I get started here, I'll try to make as good, try to zip through this as fast as I can. But today's date is the 26th of April 2021, and it is a Monday. And I'm going to revisit, revisit the subject of housing here in the state of Montana, or alternative housing, or whatever you want to call it. This is a subject that I've talked about a lot on my channel. You know, especially about the ridiculous high rates of, of real estate in the state of Montana. I'm a native of this state. I was born in Kalispell, December 23rd, 1951. I'm almost 70 years old. I've been around a lot in the state of Montana. I'm well versed on Montana subjects, including hunting and fishing and real estate and everything else. And never in my born days, I've said this before, did I think I was looking to be looking anybody in the eye, looking at the webcam and all this other garbage and saying, look, a house is going to cost you half a million dollars in the state of Montana. It's going to cost you a, a half a million dollars just to plant your rear end here in Montana if you move in here, say, from wherever. You know, Ohio or Illinois or California or just wherever. I can assure you, ladies and gentlemen, it never used to be like this. And here's case in point right here. My cell phone. I've got an email I'd like to share. And I did the, I'm did. i doing this movie file mostly because this guy wrote me. I can feel his frustration. I, I, I've expressed myself along these lines Several times on my YouTube channel. Okay, this is what this fellow by the name of Gary is saying to me. He says, Jim, been coming to my, he refers this to my state, which is fine, Gary. Been coming to my state of Montana since 1979. Good on you, Gary. That's what I'm talking about. Every year, winter, summer, spring, and fall. Just when I, listen to me, folks, listen to me. Just when I get enough money, I thought... To retire there, what the hell happened to property value? All I can tell you, Gary, is it's been going on since the 60s. I put out videos along these lines. People started coming here originally as tourists, but they started taking a bigger look around and going, my God, there's thousands and thousands and hundreds of thousands of acres. This sure don't look like Tampa, Florida or L.A. or or New York City or anything like that. And the next thing you know, people start discovering that, you know, like a like a couple hundred thousand dollars when I was a kid, I'm pretty sure of that would have bought you a whole entire ranch up here in Montana, say a couple hundred acres or whatever have you. You know, and and so what ended up happening is people start coming up here, especially land developers you know, real estate people trying to, you know, flip some money, build some houses, houses, flip some money that way, and blah, blah, blah. You know, it was mostly, I don't think a lot of these people really cared about the scenery here in Montana, the, you know, the good old Montana lifestyle and all that. They were just looking to make money. You know, Montana gold. Montana gold in this day and age right now in 2021 is real estate development. It, you know, forget about the real thing, gold. Montana's been raked over people looking for gold. I mean, if you want to really make some money in the state of Montana, invest in real estate. If you can afford it, a lot of people can't. 
But that's what happened is these small ranchers and stuff start selling out. The guys that were having a hard time making it, because ranching was a real hard way to make a living. I know, I was raised on ranches around the Pablo, Ronan, and Polson area. That's all I knew how to do by the time I went into the Uncle Sam show me in the United States Army was ranch work. You know, dealing with cows, dealing with vaccinations, branding, uh, uh, putting up hay, you know, uh, driving tractor, building fences, irrigating, you know, all the work that it takes to keep a ranch go going, I did it. So, you know, I'm pretty connected to the land in more than one way, in more than one way, okay? But anyway, Gary goes on to say, I was a working man, so not rich. Joined the party there, Gary. I, I believe it or not, I understand your frustration. I know what you're saying. I know where you're coming from. You know, but looks like you'll have to, it, it, it looks like you'll have to be rich, is what Gary's saying, to buy a decent home. Well, the way things are going, I bought this place right here in 2004. The old boy wanted 140000 I wrangled with him. I countered it 130000 We settled on 134000 for this little plot of land I'm on. Quarter of an acre with a small house and a garage. Now this place is worth like, I don't know, last time on Zillow. I look at two real estate places where you people need to be looking to for places here in Montana. And that's Realtor.com and Zillow. But I think Zillow's got this place appraised at right around 280, you know, which, you know, my place is not very fancy. It was built in 1974. It's just a small ranch home, but the wife and I, her name's Penny, by the way, you know, we've done quite a bit of work around here and whatnot, or had lots of work done and whatnot have you. So anyway, but I just thought I'd stop in the middle of Gary's email here. And explain the fact that Montana got sold out. But I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to continue this and give you an answer to that here in a second. I want this video to try. I'm trying my best for this video to mean something. Okay. I know, I know real estate went up, but it's gone crazy. Thanks for your videos. I guess that's as far as I'll get to being there. Nah, Gary, man, listen to me, bro. I'm, I, I hate to read emails like this. Because it may, because Montana is a big enough state where we can, you know, I'm always giving everybody crap about pilgrims and tourists and stuff like that. But people that honestly and earnestly want to move to Montana, I, I, we got plenty of room there. You know, we got plenty of room. So, you know, if you want to live in Montana bad enough, you'll get the job done. And this is what I recommend that people do. Okay, this is the meat and potatoes of this video right here. Remember, it's unscripted, unpracticed. I didn't know what I was going to say when I sat down here. Sometimes it takes me a little while to get, you know, my, you know, gum boot jaws here to get lubricated, you know. <laughs> gum boot jaws, man, that's pretty funny. Rubber jaws, you know, you know, whatever here. Anyway, <laughs> anyway. This is what you do, guys. Let me put this away before this iPhone hurts me. You know what I mean? Sure you do. Okay, okay. You take, like, Bozeman over here. I can assure you almost every house in Gallatin County. I'm in Park County. I'm in Livingston, Montana. It's a little different here than it is 30 miles from here, which is Bozeman, Montana, which is the county seat of Gallatin County. House over there is going to cost you half a million. What you want to do is stay away from places like Bozeman. Okay, in comparison, in comparison, this doesn't mean this is what you got to do. Look at somewhere like Butte, Montana. Butte, Montana is an old redneck mining town. For years and years, people wouldn't move into Butte because they thought everything was contaminated. Well, a lot of the heavy mining and the big ore cars and the railroad cars full of ore and, 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 and all that stuff has gone by the wayside. They're, you know, the Berkeley pit is no longer in operation. In fact, it's just full of a bunch of contaminated water. And they, they do have a new Berkeley pit. There is some mining going, but it's on a very scaled-down basis. 
And the point being is that I, I know for a fact that, say, like 10, 15 years ago, I'm not sure about right now because I haven't checked, that you could buy a halfway decent house in Butte, Montana for $30,000, $40,000. Did you hear me? Yeah. You know, maybe even brick on it. Maybe, maybe even a brick home for around that same amount of money. You know, stuff like that. And so... What you want to do is don't look at these places that are real popular. Like, I had somebody looking, somebody was talking to me about that area out there around Kalispell and Columbia Falls and all that. There's a bunch of, there's a bunch of really rich people up there. Any place, anytime that you got people like Bill Gates and, ah, oh, I, man, look, we've had a lot of Hollywood people move in here for, you know, buying second homes. We've had a lot of, Rich software developers, you know, corporate uh, heads of corporate, you know, uh, the, the different co corporations and and engineers of all different kinds and stuff like this. Well, when you've got people like that that are putting up a five and ten million dollar homes, what's it going to do to the place right next to them? It, the 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 the, the prop the cost of that property is going to go sky high. I did a video not too long, a couple months ago, up there around that Big Sky area. Or, uh, yeah, Big Sky. Right, right up in back of Bozeman, that ski lodge up there. <laughs> you, there's no way in hell you could... I, I wouldn't even waste the time to try to find a place up there to live because it's expensive. So what I'm trying to say, the very best advice I can give you is don't look at the popular places here in Montana because everything's within driving distance. Just make sure you don't get out in the boondocks so far that you get snowed in or you can't get to town to get groceries and stuff like that. you got to be careful about that kind of stuff. You understand? You know, um... Like, for example, right near Butte, there's a nice little town over there called Anaconda. Check that place out. Check Deer Lodge, Montana out. You see what I'm getting at? Stuff like that. Matter of fact, up here in, uh, up here in central Montana, there's a place called Lewistown. Check places like that. Places that aren't run-of-the-mill tourists. Anytime you got that word tourist, like West Yellowstone, Montana, or Bozeman, Montana, or anything like that, you got that word tourist hanging around, things are going to be expensive. But if you live somewhere that's not too big, a smaller, settled-down kind of town that's maybe not a tourist trap, you could possibly get into a place for a lot less money than if you was to move you know, to some ritzy wannabe place like Bozeman, Montana, or up there around Kalispell, or maybe even over Billings, or whatever, you know, that uh, for anybody that's looking to move in their state of Montana, I would, you know, rather than driving yourself absolutely crazy, I would get on realtor www.realtor.com or www.zillow.com, take a good look at the real estate market here in the state of Montana, and go from there. But don't start looking at the big cities, the ski lodges, anywhere near the parks. That means Glacier National Park. That means Yellowstone National Park, right? Only 60 miles away from my rear end, right? Here where I'm sitting. Don't look at places like this, because you are going to pay a premium for that land, and you are going to pay, pay a premium for that home. But it still doesn't mean that you can't live in the state of Montana. I hope you really see this video, Gary. I really do, because I was talking to my wife a little while ago before I come in here and turn this stupid encoder on and tried to address this issue. Because I told her, I said, I have got to make a movie file. I feel really, really bad for people that want, that want to come to Montana and they want to buy houses and stuff, and they suddenly realize that the market is inflated. And it's all due to the fact that small ranchers, big ranchers, any kind of ranchers, it all boils down to the fact that pe people give up their homesteads back from the old days, you see. Montana used to be a wild, wide open state. Nobody hardly ever came here and stuff like that. But when people start discovering Montana, that's when the price, price of land and houses slowly start going like this. But there's still a way around it, man. If you could possibly find yourself a place that's not, that's kind of off the beaten track is what I'm saying. It's about the only advice I can give you unless you can score you a plot of land and build. If you can get you a plot of land 
and you will want the best and best of everything. You, if you can get you a plot of land, let's see, I, I, I talked to a builder earlier the day and was laying this stuff out, and this is what he told me. That one of the biggest tricks is, is getting a plot of land, and if you didn't want a real big home, you know, say like a thousand square feet or something like that, you counting the plot of land and the thousand square foot home and everything, you, you know, you're looking at a little, you know, around 200,000, you know, something like that, you know, you know, but even that is a lot of money for a lot of people, you know, because I happen to know firsthand, I'm subscribed to a few channels that you people would have a hard time believing, you know, I'm, I'm, there's this colored guy, his name's Charlie Boy, and I'm subscribed to his channel, and all he does is just drive around and show the ghettos, the various ghettos and hoods and stuff around America, and my God, my God, my God, some, some of the conditions that some of these people live in, there is no way that you could get this old stump jumper to do that, you know what I mean? You know, without trying to be, and I am not trying to be racist or nothing like this. Matter of fact, I feel sorry for a lot of these people that live in the hood. You know, you couldn't get me to live in the hood. You know, <laughs> I'm too old for all that and can't run very fast. You know, ah, uh, come on, laugh. It's supposed to be funny, you know. But I, really, what I'm trying to say here is, if there's a will, there's a way. Are you hearing me, Gary? If there's a will, there's a way. And you, you, you. you I don't know. It's tough. I've known a few people that's failed out of Montana because they couldn't, you know, they just couldn't make it or they got better work offers otherwhere or they got better offers, you know, with with their housing and, and whatnot have you, you know, so. But if I was you, Gary, don't give up. Just keep looking, man, you know, and like that. And if you need to write me another email or whatever have you, I'll see what I can do to help you. But I've tried to help a few people out with real estate things. Some people I've been successful with, some people I haven't, just because, you know, they, they were either too picky about what they wanted or whatever have you. Sometimes you can't be all that picky in the state of Montana, especially if, if you're working on a budget, you know, which is definitely me. The wife and I, we're, we're both retired now. She just retired a month or so ago, and we're certainly not rich, you know, but, you know, we, we make it okay. And so, you know, but I, that's really all I've got to say. Just never give up, you know, just never say woe in a mud hole, like the, like the old timers up here used to say. So there you are, Gary, and I'm glad to see you folks. And what, well, I don't see you, but, you know, I'm kind of back here in the YouTube making mood, I guess. I've got a lot of honeydews I've got to get done, and I'm working on a guitar back there and a bunch of other crap. So anyway... We'll see you on down the pike, and thanks for thanks for writing to me, Gary. And I hope you hope you view this video, and I hope you understand what I'm saying here. How my oh, 17 minutes. Look at this, man. This is way too long. Uh, okay, I got to get out of here. Thank you very much. We'll see you on down the trail, and adios, my friends.